Hello everyone, it's Karen at the Cool Tools Studio. I'm here today to offer a quick introduction to our 24 karat gold for silver painting powder. This is a really easy to use gold product that you can use to add accents to your silver jewelry. You can apply it directly to fine silver or an enriched sterling such as a 960. But if you're gonna apply it to a sterling silver, you need to depletion gild it first. The best surface to apply this gold to is the matte white that you get when your piece comes fresh out of the kiln. You don't need to do any brushing or finishing, it's just good to go just like this. If you've already polished your piece and then you make the decision that you want to add gold, you're going to want to reheat your piece to return it to this matte white state. You can either do so with a torch, just kind of gently heating it until you see it kind of softening and getting white again, or you can pop it back in your kiln and fire it to whatever kind of um, firing schedule you used for your clay and just only hold for five minutes. So if I'm applying it to an easy 960 piece, I would bring it back up to 1675 and just hold for five minutes and then I'd, I'd get this nice matte white surface again. So the gold painting powder comes in a little black jar and then it comes with a liquid agent to mix it with. And the liquid agent's a little bit sticky and it helps prevent the gold from flaking off when you're moving it to fire it. And it just makes it a nice viscosity for painting. So I like to take a little bit of my gold and a little bit does go a very long way. It doesn't look like much here, but this is plenty for lots of projects. You can always scoop out more, but that'll be a good start. And then for the liquid agent, I just have like a ultra clay pick or if you've got a toothpick or anything like that on hand, just kind of pick some up and I'm going to bring it over and let it drop onto my gold here. And we'll see how that is. I might need to add a little bit more. But I'm going to mix it in. Whoop. And I'm working in one of these um, kind of double sided little plastic pallets that Cool Tool sells. And it's kind of perfect for this because I've got some water on this side that I can use if this gets a little thick or I can use if my brush is getting kind of clumpy. Um, and then I can use my gold on this side. And when I'm done, I can close this and it'll be protected and I don't have to worry about anything falling into my gold and I can keep it nice and clean that way. And then when I'm dipping my brush into here, any gold that's gonna fall off I can let it settle, leave the lid open on this, let the water evaporate out, and then reclaim that gold. So I've got my gold and liquid agent combined here. And it should be not quite, somewhere between a paste and a slip. So this actually looks a little bit thin right now. So I'm gonna bring over a touch more gold um, I'd say you're kind of looking for something around the consistency of like a, a cheap kind of thin acrylic paint. And so for something like this, when I'm done working again, you can either um, let this dry and then scrape it off into your gold or you could just swirl it around in your water and then when the water evaporates out again, reclaim that gold. But whatever you're doing, reclaim the gold. <laughs> Mixing a little more dry in, and that looks pretty good. When you're painting it on, you don't want to be able to see through it. Like it, it shouldn't look kind of spotty and thin. You want it to be um, opaque. So now again for applying the gold, I've got that nice kiln white surface. Um, I haven't touched this face with greasy hands. You wanna make sure that it's clean. And I've just got a, a brush here that I'm going to be painting it on. And you can see here again, you can't see through this as I'm working. If it starts looking a little thin, you'll wanna pick some more up but this tiny bit of gold really does go a very long way. And I'm just applying it to the raised texture on this piece. It's a really easy kind of way to give yourself a guide of something to follow. 
but you could paint on a pattern of your own imagining. You could kind of drizzle on in an abstract way. There's lots of ways that you can use this gold to add accents. This uh, gold painting powder, when it's mixed with a liquid agent, it's got a really nice stick to it. And when you allow it to completely dry, you're actually able to go in and paint another layer on top. Um, some of the other golds that I've worked with, you kind of end up disturbing the lower layer when you try to do that. And you have to paint one, fire it, and then paint another layer, fire it. But with this one, you're able to fire, or you're able to paint two coats in one go and then just fire once. So I'm gonna lay down my first coat here and then we'll touch base and I'll show you applying a second coat and then we'll finally fire. So I just wrapped up my first coat here and you can see that where I was working earlier is kind of a lighter color and that means that it's dry and it's ready for its second coat. So just picking up a little bit more gold on my brush and like I said before, I'm able to apply this second coat without disturbing the first coat. And then I only have to fire once. I do recommend two coats just to make sure that you're gonna get nice, even coverage. And I'm just gonna keep on painting this layer and then I'll show you what it should look like when it's completely dry and ready for firing. You're ready to fire when your gold is completely dry and it should kind of have this yellow ochre color to it instead of being that sort of brown color it is when it's wet. And there are two ways you can fire this. You can either fire it with a torch, which I'm going to be demonstrating today, or you can fire it in a kiln. If you're going to be kiln firing it, you fire this piece to 1470 and hold it for 10 minutes. For a torch firing, just like if you're torch firing precious metal clay, you want to make sure that you're working in a fire safe environment. I have an annealing pan filled with pumice and then a ceramic fiber brick here that I'm gonna be working with. My hair is pulled back, I'm wearing safety glasses, and I'm working in a ventilated environment. Just like when you're torch frying precious metal clay, you're gonna use the color that the silver and the gold has turned as an indicator for target temperature. And you're gonna be looking for the silver to be kind of glowing that peachy color, and the gold should be glowing a bright orange. So I went ahead and lowered the lights so we'll be able to see those colors a little better. Got my butane torch here, I'm gonna release the lock adjust the fuel and start the torch. I like to gently kind of warm the area around my piece first before approaching the piece itself with the torch. And now I'm gently warming the piece as a whole. You wanna make sure that you're heating the whole piece and not just part of it. So keep your torch moving the whole time to avoid overheating a part as well. All right, so I'm sneaking closer and you can see that my clay is, well, my metal now. Uh, my silver's starting to glow kind of that peachy color and the gold's glowing orange. So at this point, I would start the timing of my firing. You want to fire for one to two minutes. Um, for me, it's always, Kind of like, well, I could just fire at one, but I'm always on the safe side, so I'm going to be firing for two minutes today. So I've been maintaining this color for two minutes, and at this point I am done firing. You want to allow your piece to cool naturally and do not quench it. My piece has cooled, and at this point you're going to want to take a look at it and Check for areas that um, could be potentially thin. It looks like I did a good job with my coats and there's gold everywhere where I want it to be. But sometimes if you apply it too thin, when you fire it, uh, it kind of disappears a little bit. And if you're gonna apply another coat, you wanna do that before you do any burnishing. Um, like I said, this one looks good to go. So I don't need to apply more and refire. And at this point, I'm ready to burnish the gold down. So I've got a burnisher here. You can work with an agate burnisher as well. It's just what I have on hand. And when you're burnishing, you're applying pressure. So I'm working on a nice firm surface here. And burnishing, you're just rubbing. And you're kind of pressing down as you go.
And this is kind of that final step and really getting this gold on there. And getting a nice surface as well. And once you're done with this, um, you can either, I kind of like the look of um, the kind of kiln white with the gold, but if you want to bring the whole piece up to a polish, you can either use a brass brush or you can tumble it, um, hand polish with polishing cloths, any of those are excellent options for polishing up the rest of your surface after you've applied the gold. I'm just going to keep burnishing until all my gold is nice and shiny. So my gold is all burnished down and like I said at this point you can continue to polish it and bring the rest of it up to a shine, but I like it just how it is. This gold for silver painting powder is an excellent way to introduce some gold to your silver. It's a really rich yellow color and it's super simple to apply and fire. I hope you feel like you can give it a go. Thanks for watching.